Hi chat. Welcome to another stream. How are y'all doing today? Let's see. It is... It is a what, Friday? Friday? Is that what day it is? <clears throat> it's Friday, October 16th of 2020. And we're here for another stream. Hopefully you guys are all doing well. Who do we all have in chat today? We've got Rollers who's first. How's it going, Rollers? We've also got El Papa Pig. We've got Andrew Lanex. We've got to Does Not Eat Booty, who apparently does not eat booty. <sighs> welcome, welcome. Uh, who else we got? We've got S1 Cube. Uh, we've also got Broken Mares. We've got Jake the Programmer. We've got Knackle Eric. Ooh, Knackle Eric, you're here earlier today. Good to see you. We've also got Nymphs. Hello, hello. Okay, so the plan for what I want to work on today is pregment stuff, or pregment CI stuff. I'm very close to being able to get this out the door. Um, I think we're going to demote these two. Uh, but I, I think realistically I can get almost all of this done today. So I might be able to launch the alpha either today or tomorrow. Although... Knowing me, that's ambitious, and we won't get through much of it but on stream, but we'll, we'll see what we can do. Um, we're competing with KubeCon today for streaming, so we'll see how that goes. I know they're on Twitch. Um, but anyway, let's work on this. So the thing that we worked on last time was open sourcing the Docker image, and it didn't work. <laughs> It really didn't work uh, on stream. It almost worked, uh, but we got some like flaky weird error message. I did a little digging into it, and it turns out that that error message is due to Podman. There's some bug in Podman push, which doesn't play nice with GitHub's uh, Docker registry. So for, for whatever reason, GitHub's Docker registry, I don't know, I think it's a combination of both of them being slightly buggy and Podman not, you know, understanding their errors. And so, unfortunately, I switched everything to use Docker instead of Podman. And uh, things worked. I got the push working. But I basically had to switch from Podman to Docker, and I had to change a bunch of things. Um, including temporarily disabling the tests to <laughs> enable pushing. Um, I also... What else did I do? Oh, then I... Oh, I had to change Docker push also because Docker push and Podman push use a different command line. Podman's is way more convenient than Docker's. Docker's you have to do this like weird retagging thing here. Um, but this actually works for Podman also, so I was kind of fine doing this change. And the last part is I had to fix the test to be compatible with Docker. Um, and that was basically setting user inside the run commands. Uh, Podman, you don't need to do this because it's running rootless, and so it maps the root user to the host user. Interestingly enough, this actually makes the build fail on my computer now, because I don't actually have Docker anymore, so my Docker is Podman, and the user flag actually makes Podman fail, unless I set some like user NS mapping shenanigans, but... Anyway, it works in CI, and that's kind of the important thing. Um, also, I switched from packages.github.com to ghcr.io. This is GitHub's new Docker registry thing. And this supports public reads, so you can now download this image. I should be able to do podman pull this. Oh, we need ghcr.io slash this, and that should download that image, if I recall correctly. Yep. Cool. Uh, but we're going to be playing a little bit more with this today <clears throat> and getting that working. Hey, what's up, Catherine? Hello, hello. Good to see you again. But yeah, switched from this to ghcr.io. Uh, this didn't work out of the box, so I had to do a bunch of like kind of annoying things. Uh, like apparently the GitHub token method, which works for packages, uh, for GitHub packages, doesn't work for ghcr. So <laughs> this is probably a, one of those situations where team A did not talk to team B at GitHub, and so... The feature kind of sucks, <laughs> but um, yeah, I switched to using a token based auth instead of the automatically provisioned uh, GitHub token, which was you know, a little annoying, but uh, switched that over. I had a whole bunch of problems with the token permissions, so I had to do a bunch of other stuff as well. Uh, like initially, I couldn't push from my service account 
So I was pushing with my account, and I don't know why my account had access, but the service account did not. Uh, or I didn't at the time. I figured it out later. There's like a checkbox in... And, and this makes no sense. So normally I would expect it to be in this repository because it's named after this repository. Uh, but it's actually at the org level. You have to go to packages, and then you have to go to here. And then... Where is it? There's a drop down somewhere. Uh... Um... Oh, package settings. And then I had to add the role and write permissions here. So this is this was the magic sauce that I totally missed out on when I was trying to get it to push using uh, this this um, this bot user. Wait, why do they get contributions for this? What are your two contributions? Oh, <laughs> apparently joining GitHub and joining an org count as contributions. Amazing. Would not have expected that, but apparently that's apparently that's a thing. Um, but yeah, I got that working. And then the last thing that I did was I enabled caching for the build uh, so that it doesn't do a full build from scratch every time. And the way you can do that <clears throat> is by kind of two parts. So I moved the build from being just Docker build out here into a little script here. And the script does two things. First, it pulls the base image from GHCR. Uh, I should probably make that fail or like fail open. So fail closed. Fail open, whichever one is like, ignore the error. Um, well, I, I don't remember, whatever it is. Um, but if you uh, if you pull this image and then you use this cache from argument, this will cause Docker to try and use this image as a cache source. So, um, yeah. Um, this saved a whole bunch of time on the builds. So if we look at the timing on these. Um, this was before I did cache from, so it was taking like four minutes and 40 seconds. And this is after I did cache from, so we, I, I shaved off like three and a half minutes on a warm, a warm build. Um, it still spends quite a bunch of time pulling the base image, but I don't know. I think it's, I think it's fine. Uh, seems, seems to work well enough. Most of the time in this is now spent in the actual test, so. I'd say that's pretty good. Uh, one last thing that I want to do here is add uh, cron so it'll run periodically. Um, which I guess I can do that right now because it should be real quick. Pregmit slash pregmit.com, which is where I usually grab my cron example from. Uh, schedule. Schedule. Uh, I think I can just edit this from the, <laughs> from here, right? On schedule, why are you, runs every day. I think we want to run this once a week on a Sunday, so seven Sunday, on the seventh of every month. Uh, run schedule, run on Sunday. Cron job every Sunday. Star star sun. I think actually this can be seven. Why is it not letting me edit? Oh, this is the wrong one. <laughs> Did I put seven here? Does that work? Saturday. Eight? <laughs> Zero? <laughs> Sunday. Wait, why is seven Saturday and zero is Sunday? Is six Saturday also? Is 999 Saturday? <laughs> Seems a little bit buggy. Okay, so this will run 830 UTC on Saturday, which is like on Sunday. Which, um... <laughs> What time is 8.30 UTC? 8.30 UTC in Pacific time. 1 a.m. 1 a.m. Friday. So it's subtract seven hours. So early in the morning on Sunday is when it'll run for me. I think that's fine. Uh, start commit, create new branch. Oh, damn it. 
<laughs> I've got to change the commit message. We can do that. Now I guess we'll have to open it up on the uh, run uh, GitHub action once weekly. Hey, what's up, Halton Catch and Cupid Lover? Hello, hello. Welcome back. Good to see you. Um, run our image. Get check out master. And off the band. How's it going? Welcome back. And quit smoking, Keck. How's it going? Everyone's showing up today. <clears throat> Get branch dash u orange master. Get commit dash dash end. Force push because I changed the commit message. Doing well, that's good off the band. And Bell Office. Hello, hello. Good to see you. Uh... <laughs> Annoying that I I didn't uh <laughs> I didn't name the commit message properly in the first place. But <clears throat> anyway, we'll let that build. Uh, but the first thing that I want to work on today is actually being able to pull this image in pre-commit CI. And once that's done, I can actually get end-to-end, -end, uh, just like no touching the boxes, like get deploy pre-commit and have it run completely without um, without any human intervention, which is pretty cool. Hey, Michaela, how's it going? Welcome, welcome. Uh, is this the stream for cute nerds? <laughs> are, you, are you talking about me? Uh, Kevin says, have you completed Hacked Over Vest? Yeah, kind of an accident. Uh, I think I completed it, like, the first, the first day. Uh, come on. Do, do, do. I don't know if they've matured yet, though. I don't remember how that works. Why are you taking so long? What are you doing? Waiting for github.com. Oh, it's probably github's fault, then. Actually, I understand this. Github is, like, super slow for github apps, for auth, for whatever reason. So this always takes forever. Um, there we go. Ooh, I guess it matures in seven hours and then I will get my, my four out of four plus 15 extras. <clears throat> but anyway, there's, I, I do a lot of stuff, so I got a lot of things. Uh, But some of, <laughs> oddly enough, some of them are like for my own repositories, which feels a little bit cheating. I guess for, uh, for, oh, that reminds me, I have to do another thing. <laughs> RC3 was released today, so let me do this. Um, yeah, I, I guess all of, like almost all of the contributions I made were to repositories where I have the commit bit, so. Uh, RC3 was released. Uh, update to RC3. But we'll get we'll get that out of the way today. <clears throat> uh, Jake the Programmer says, so I'm using the Philips Hue API, and when I use Postman, I get an SSL verification error, but when using the testing site for the API, I don't think it's doing any verification. Do you think it's safe to put verify equals false argument in my request? Uh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't put verify equals false. Um, what URL or what domain are you hitting, uh, Jake the Programmer? What, what domain has the bad cert? Because in theory you could, um, in theory you could, uh, <laughs> you know, fix the cert issue, or you could pull down, you know, figure out why their CA is failing and maybe change change your machine to have access to that CA. Although, if their SSL cert is just broken, that seems kind of bad. Uh, what is it? Hugh Phillips Hugh API. Uh, what is the domain for it? <laughs> love, love that. Mmm... They're all opted out. Perfect. Hey, what's up, Int45H? Thank you for the host. Welcome to the stream. Uh, the domain is for like this bridge. You bridge IP. Oh, it's your own like IP address on your local network. 
then you probably don't have to worry about HTTPS. Does does the HTTP API work? Does it actually listen over HTTPS? That seems weird. I was expecting it's like some API hosted by them. Uh, Kenneth says, I figured you would complete it quickly without even trying. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anything's going to mature? Uh, I mean, I would hope I'm somewhat mature at this point. Keep it lover says, how would you add VBA code to GitHub? I'm just an office scrub. Uh, you mean like source code in like Excel and Word macros, that kind of stuff? I mean, you can always just like copy and paste it out. I don't know that there's, let's see, export VBA macro office. Export your VBA code for use in another Excel application. Yeah, I guess you would do this uh, and you would manage this. Yeah, this seems like a good approach to this. Use their import built-in export functionality to save it in a separate repo. <clears throat> Kevin says, you do ton of contributions, so you'll probably have others too. Yeah, that's kind of true. Although I've been trying to focus on pre-commit CI, so I haven't had much time to like fix other people's stuff, <laughs> but yeah. So it says, so I interviewed for dad's company and I have so many mixed feelings, most of them not good. I mean, it's a blockchain company, of course. <laughs> I mean, I've, I, at, at face value, I have not good feelings about it too, but um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, what's up, Dom DF Coding? Hello, hello. Who says, fer, fer, ferrips. Ferrips? Did I typo Phillips? I see. <laughs> Phil says, there's this O'Reilly book about hacking Philip Hughes. Uh, uh, Philip, oh my goodness, now I can't say it. <laughs> Philip Hughes and other things. Phillips Hughes, blah, blah, blah. Uh, talking about it just makes me want to reread it. I see, I see. Oh, yeah, well, if it's on your own network, you can probably not worry so much about it. Half a year, Pog Champ. Hey, Juicebox Hero, resubbing for six months in a row with the Pog Champ. It has indeed been half a year. Man, I can't believe I've known you for half a year, Juicebox Hero. It seems crazy. But thank you for resubbing, appreciate it. Um. <clears throat> uh. Bookmare says, where it's gotten so shitty, I spent like 10 minutes Googling how to use my own template because I kept suggesting only Microsoft's online templates. Oh no. B. Jonas says, the VBA, the VBA editor has an option to export or import source code in plain text files. Basically just writes the basic code of the module plus one magic line to the top that gives the module name. Oh, yeah, that's kind of cool. <clears throat> I get the feeling that they don't know what they're going to do either. And they're trying to do 50 million products in a short amount of time. Hmm. She says, did you tell them about Safeway? I did not tell them about Safeway. You guys, do you guys want to hear a fun story chat? I guess fun's maybe not the right word. About Safeway last night? <clears throat> so, hmm, how do I preface this? We were going to get grapes. We, Juice, Juice was like, let's get grapes. And I was like, well, fuck it. We'll go to Safeway. We'll get some grapes. So we went to Safeway. And we picked out some grapes. We also picked up some other stuff like bananas and coffee and milk and some other stuff. But anyway, we're going to get grapes. And I don't know about you guys, but during a pandemic, I'm going to spend a lot of effort to not get anywhere close to people. Um, especially not bumping into them. We'll put it that way. Uh, but anyway, we're walking, we're walking through the store. We've picked up our grapes and coffee and stuff, and we're going to go get milk. And this this uh, this guy runs into uh, Juice in the store, and he's not wearing a mask. So I say, "Hey, buddy, wear a fucking mask," and we just we just continue walking and like whatever. Um, <laughs> but this guy. <laughs> Like, you know, like two, two, two or two or three minutes later, uh, we're, you know, picking out milk. I'm looking at expiration dates. I'm trying to see like which milk we're going to pick. And, uh, they all had the same expiration date. They were all, uh, November 12th. So it didn't really, didn't really impact our, uh, buying decision there. Um, 
<laughs> but this guy, two or three minutes later, comes by and he's like, Hey, punk-ass bitch! Do you have anything that you want to say to me? And I was like, yeah, put on your mask. <laughs> and he just went off. <laughs> I wish I would have filmed it. It would have been fucking hilarious. Um, but he's like, I can wear a mask if I don't want to. And I was like, well, it's, you know, the rules of the store in the county that you have to put a mask on. Like, I don't make the rules. Uh, I also can't enforce them, but I can get a manager if you want me to. And he's like, you're a, you're a punk ass bitch. You should, you should watch your back. I'm going to spit in your face. And I'm like, cool. Yeah. Good luck, man. Like, have fun. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> catch, catch me outside. I'll fucking kick your ass. And I'm like, all right, buddy. Cool. Have fun. <laughs> um, but, oh my God. You, you know, when you see that Chad comic, uh, Chad meme comic. Um, he legit looked like a skinny fucking version of um. I just want to see the fucking Chad meme. Uh. Anyway, he looked like a he looked like a skinny version of of the Chad the Chad guy here. Like legit, like. <laughs> Same facial structure, same like douchey short yellow hair, um, but yeah, he was he was uh, <laughs> he was a a bit of a bit of work. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that incel actually meant involuntarily celibate. <laughs> that makes so much sense now. <laughs> but oh man. He did put his mask on, though, so... <laughs> Mission accomplished, I guess? Um, but anyway. <clears throat> uh, he didn't hit me, he didn't spit at me, so everything turned out alright. But... <laughs> but it was, it was pretty funny. <clears throat> but anyway, that's, that's the Safeway story. Uh... So it says, and it'd be a strange part-time pay while I learn view, which wouldn't take too long. I see. I mean, you could always use that company as a way to, uh, to like, um, you know, bounce to another job. Like, you know, working for an actual real company is, is something, I guess. So, it, I, I mean, consider it, I guess. Also, if you know React, learning Vue is pretty straightforward. They're pretty similar in how things work. It's really just like adjusting your knowledge of one framework to another. <clears throat> uh, BJN says, I use that function a lot, both to save modules and to import data formatted as VBA code that I write from an external program. Oh, I see. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, Destiny Booty says, Juice is going to get later for that sub. What? <laughs> Ferrib says, comes from a Philips advert from the 80s. Is that really a thing? An uproarious radio campaign for Phillips proved some... Is it just like... Am I gonna get cancelled for this? Is this like racist? <laughs> are they are they trying to like make fun of Asian people? Is that what's going on here? Oh my goodness. That's exactly what they're doing. At a time when Brits were obsessed with all things high-tech and Japanese. Yikes. <laughs> Fucking yikes. Oh my goodness. Well, I guess that was kind of predictable. <clears throat> Every good story starts with we're going to get grapes. <laughs> Getting grapes in a pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not your buddy, pal. <laughs> Safeway, not very safe. I mean, yeah. I wish I, man, wish I would have recorded it. It would have been so funny. <clears throat> Hey, Pugas, bitch, COVID isn't real, it's 5G waves! Yeah. Uh, was he using Arch, though? Uh. <laughs> he doesn't need no mask, just beats the shit out of each COVID molecule. Uh. <clears throat> he also was not waiting for us outside, it's true, it's true. He, uh, he, like, fucking ran out of the store. Like, he, I, I think he was scared, but... It's fine. He was also like 6'5". He's like, you know, a good five or six inches, six or seven inches taller than I am. <clears throat> but, yeah. 
guy's definitely me if I was an irresponsible, disgusting piece of shit, says Bell <laughs> Uh So it says, it's definitely being considered, but I want to see how Little Caesars pans out. It pans out? <laughs> like, like, pan pizza? Eh? Eh? <laughs> uh. <clears throat> Not to mention, extremely secure versus the startup company. Yeah, 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 it's true, it's true. Uh, Little Caesars would be definitely a more stable choice. B. Jonas says, oh, shoot. I've got, uh, chopsticks here. <laughs> um, you guys don't know my snacking habits. Um, I like to eat snack foods with chopsticks, so it limits the rate at which I can consume them. So, um, I was eating, fuck, what are they called? Nuts. Um, hey, what's up? What's up, H. Miller NYC? Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Which, no, they're not nuts. They're legumes. Fuck, what are they called? Cashews. I was eating cashews and, you know, eating cashews one at a time. And I forgot to put the bowl away, so, you know. <sighs> I've got dishes in my room. <clears throat> but anyway. Uh, the import export function of VBA macro editor is scriptable from the same VBA, so I can write VBA code that loads a VBA module from a file. Oh, that's cool. That's pretty cool. Could have been a viral video. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, but yeah, maybe he saw your bulging muscles. <laughs> Uh, maybe you realize that maybe I knew Kung Fu. No, but maybe I do. <laughs> hey, what's up, Drunk Time Lord? Hello, hello. Good to see you. Uh... <laughs> the rights code just inflates and reveals his 7-Eleven chiseled bod from working with LFS. <laughs> uh... <laughs> That's amazing. <clears throat> It also keeps your keyboard clean, cries in Cheeto-covered keyboard, oh no, oh no. Yasin, how's it going? Welcome back. Cashews are one of my favorites, yo, I like cashews too. Anthony's actually 5 foot 36 inches. Yeah, that's that's how that works, Michaela. That's exactly how that works. Um. <laughs> but anyway. So, I believe... There's a not implemented error in here for what we need to start working on. Cool, yes, yeah, so we need to do the image pulling. <clears throat> and get the image out of this. Um, so, the way that I want to do this is I have, I've pushed the images to two places. I don't know what the limitations on GitHub's public registry is. So let's actually look at that. Uh, GitHub image. I hate that they call it the container registry because it is not a registry for containers. It's a registry for images and images and containers are separate. <laughs> this is, I mean, AWS makes the same mistake. They also call it the Elastic Container Registry, but it's not a container registry. It's an image registry. Um, but let's see, what is there? Uh, free for public images. Free for private images during the beta. We don't have a private image, we have a public image. What are their limits? I guess it's, it's limitless if it's free, so. We're actually not going to be pulling all that often, so I'm not super concerned about this code here, but I think I should, uh, you know, <clears throat> fix that, but... That's what he wants you to think, and then he reveals his final form. Drunk Time Lord says, I learned about typing.fix today, and I'm not sure how well it works or when to use it. Maybe make a video about that. I don't know what typing fixed is. Python 3 typing. Am I about to learn something? What? That's not what I wanted. Why did Google give me that? Fixed. Uh, do you mean final? <clears throat> a special timing construct to indicate type checkers that a name cannot be reassigned or overridden in a subclass. Is, that, is this what you mean? Like the... Yeah, this is kind of a holdover from Java. Um, I don't actually know that it's that useful. Like, I don't know why they added this. Adding a final quantifier. Then again, I don't use inheritance, like ever. So <laughs> yeah, such as Java. Um, 
but oh, you can also add it for a class. What does it do for a class? It allows it to, or makes it not inheritable. Prohibit any class decorated from being subclassed. Yeah. I think I could probably do a video about it. I don't. Yeah, I mean, I don't really use uh, inheritance all that much. Uh, but sure, we'll do, we'll do, we'll do video idea. Video idea. Typing final. Since I guess there was a pep, it was probably it's probably worth talking about at some point. But, um, but yeah. Hey, what's up, tasty wheat? Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Hopefully you're doing well. Uh, Tubrum says you blew you just blew my mind, Anthony. Everyone calls it a container registry, and uh, we <laughs> we need to call it out. Yeah, I mean, they're all wrong. <laughs> they're all they're all wrong. <laughs> I think they copied it from Google's container registry. So who was first? Uh, GCR launch date. Uh, that's not searchable. Google container registry launch date. Uh, we're never going to be able to find this, are we? Maybe Wikipedia knows about it. Wiki Google container registry. Oh, I don't have my little things. Uh... Anyway, someone in chat can figure out which came first. But yeah, they're all wrong, <laughs> essentially. Uh, Inst45H says, thanks for the stream and good luck with your Python thing. Ooh, ooh. I'm lurking. Well, thanks for lurking. Thanks for stopping by, Inst45H. Good to see you. Uh, IUHTRKJ, smash hand on keyboard, says, what do you think of a text editor that has different backgrounds depending on the file? Ooh, I don't know that of any of that do that. I've not heard of a text editor that does that, um, but I mean, it wouldn't be that hard to implement. Uh, like, I'd probably make Babby do that. I don't know why I would do that though. The thing is, like, the the problem with changing the background color is it potentially makes the theme more difficult to write because usually the colors for the individual syntax are, uh, you know, per theme ish um hmm yeah i don't know how that would work but maybe drink time which says i thought it's more like const from js no it's it's mostly it's more like final from from java um there isn't really an equivalent of const in python as far as i understand maybe maybe local variables with final <laughs> yeah, this is a it means a type checker should prevent future. Oh, I guess it does also work like um, it, I guess it also works like const in JavaScript. Um, so I guess it has two uses. It's a little bit weird that it's kind of multi-use there. I'm typing import final t final equals one t equals two. This should fail, right? Virtual env install my pi my pi t dot pi cannot assign to final name t. Yeah, so it also works like this, but I don't see how this is useful. Then again. This gets into the whole let versus const thing too. Um, is uh, I'm not sure how useful const is over let in JavaScript. Um, I don't get me wrong. Like I, I understand why you would want to use const, but I also think like it's not that useful. Like I, I don't actually see this form of final ever being useful in code. Like I, I can I can kind of see it for the like the Java like version, but I I just don't see this being useful. <clears throat> Uh says I tried to look it up and I got nothing. I see. Maybe change the theme depending on the file type. Oh yeah, that might be an idea. I also don't know of any editors that would do that either. Um, but 
you know, it might be possible to hack that onto Babby, I would think. Um, Necklark says, forgot to tell you, I started working on my own text editor. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> You're, I think, the fourth person that I've uh, <laughs> indirectly con convinced to start working on a text editor. Uh, curious how the buffering works. So my buffering is not very smart. <laughs> Abby, uh, screen, no, 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 file. So the way my buffering works is it hides it in this buff object, um, but it loads the entire file on startup, which, you know, it's maybe not the most performant way to do that. Uh, like you could do slightly better by only partially reading the file or like lazily reading the rest of the file. Uh, but then you get into all sorts of like, you know, consistency issues where, like, if the file gets partially written when you've only partially read it, then you have, like, a weird, you know, mixed, mixed, uh, mixed situation, which you probably don't want. Um, so I just read the whole damn file. <laughs> I store it per line, which makes it a little bit easier. I also don't store the new lines on the lines. I only set the new lines when I'm saving or reading the file. Uh, so if we look at Babby buff, uh, yeah, I store, I store the lines here. I store a little bit of information about whether this buffer should use tabs or tabs, tabs or spaces and what spaces size. Um, but yeah, it stores here. Also, I have this, uh, I use this to do my undo and redo buffers. So I keep track of all of the inserts, updates, uh, inserts, updates and deletes of the things. But anyway, that's that's kind of how that works. Uh, hey, what's up, Abdu Gaming? Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. <clears throat> Yasin says, best I could think of was arrow pi. You mean for final? Or for, for what? Uh, <clears throat> Drink Time Lord says, my thoughts are if you need const, your function is too long. Yeah, I, 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 that, that makes sense to me. Uh, Yasin says, I mean, you can use it in a physics program where values should not change. Um, yeah, but I think like marking, like having a module scoped constant, I think is enough to say that it's, it's constant already. I don't think you need to additionally say that it's constant because you would need to, you'd need to mutate the module or use the global keyword. And I think that's, that's a big enough, like, oh God, I, I'm doing something wrong situation there. Um, Trick Downward says, I might work on a coding thesaurus to help and giving variables shorter, more descriptive names. I actually saw somebody post something about this on Twitter recently. Uh, but I only like briefly read it. Variable name thesaurus. Mm. It was like just a few days ago. And so many, I don't know. I don't think it existed. I think they were saying this would be a cool idea. Maybe it was you drunk time Lord. Maybe I'm just like <laughs> losing my mind. Maybe you said that in chat and I just misattributed it to Twitter. Uh, but yeah, it does sound like a cool idea. Ern says, why did Anthony Wright's code leave the live coders team? Do I still have my command or did I delete the command? I deleted the command. Um, if you want to check that out, if you want to check out my reasonings why, I talk about it at the beginning of a video that I posted recently, which is this one. So check out, check out this video. Uh, inside the video I talk about my reasonings for leaving the live coders. But the TLDR is they secretly turned, well, somewhat secretly turned into a for-profit company and were without the knowledge of streamers, taking money from sponsorship deals. Uh, <laughs> essentially stealing money. <clears throat> but I said, fuck that. We're going to make our own team. And so now we've got a team called the Pograms, uh, <laughs> which I created and I like the name, but <laughs> yes, we are, we are the, we are the Pograms. There's a, there's a handful of us in the team, handful of us in the team. Uh, Abdu Gaming says, can you tell me what this is, please? It is my first time in the stream. Sure, I will give you a TLDR of what I'm working on. 
uh, which is usually all over the place and just kind of answering questions and that sort of dealio. But we're working on pre-commit CI. We're very, very close to getting it working. Uh, but the TLDR for pre-commit CI is developers spent a fair chunk of time during their development flow on fixing relatively trivial problems in their code. Pre-commit CI both enforces that these issues are discovered, which is often for each developer's workflow via pre-commit, but also fixes the problems automatically, letting developers focus their time on more valuable problems. Uh, so I'm basically building a CI system for GitHub, um, but it'll also work for other stuff, and it uses this open source tool that I created called pre-commit. The idea behind pre-commit is you set up a configuration which says which tools and versions you want to use and how and like where to download them from. And pre-commit integrates with GitHooks. It also knows how to install all of those tools and run them against files in your repository. Um, but yeah, that's that's yeah, kind of my baby. It's my little open source tool that I have spent probably more time on this than anything else. And it's very close to 5,000 stars on GitHub. We're so close. 5,000, that big 5-0. Actually, we just hit 8,000 followers on Twitch, too. So we're, we've got all sorts of milestones just just achieved or right on the uh, horizon there. But, yeah. <clears throat> Drink Time Lord says, By the way, I ordered my mic. High-quality streams coming back this Sunday. Ooh, that's nice. Hey, what's up, the on the server? Hello, hello. Juicebox Hero says famous. <laughs> I mean, if 5,000 stars on, on GitHub is famous, then, uh, I mean, I guess... That is quite a lot. I'm I'm kind of proud of that number, but I know a lot of my stuff has like zero stars. So, webs. <clears throat> Jahaga says, "Have you spent more time on pre-commit than talks or flakeate?" Yes, by far. Um, the thing is, I didn't create talks or flakeate. I was just added as a maintainer later in their life cycle. Um, but yeah, I think I've only been working on talks for like three years, and I've been working on talks or sorry, flakeate for like two years. Um, although it might be like four and three now that I think about it. I think I joined the Talks project in 2017, uh, early 2017, so it's almost four years there. And I think I joined Flake 8 right around the same time. I don't know. The big question is if Dead is going to have, if Dead has zero stars. No, Dead has like 63 stars, something like that. Um, but it is actually useful and I do use it all the time. Oh, 95. I'm like super far off on this one. <clears throat> the project's not actually dead, but it's named dead, so I, I memed a little bit here. But anyway. Okay, so uh, peeling back the stag a little bit here. We need to do an image pull here, and I have two registries that I want to do uh, if the image has a... Uh, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna later change this for non uh, pre-commit CI images. Uh, at some point, a pro feature will allow people to use custom images. But for now, uh, we're always gonna be using pre-commit CI images. So I'm gonna do a little assert here. Assert image dot starts with uh, pre-commit CI slash runner image and image, so this will just be an assertion that we're always going to be running with our particular image here. And, um, uh, equals, And what we're going to do here is we're going to try and pull from GitHub's registry first. And if that fails, we're going to fall back to Docker Hub. Um, I don't expect GHCR to fall over or Docker Hub to fall over. This is more just like, uh, you know, defense defense in different, uh, you know, depth, depth, of, uh, depth of fallbacks. And eventually I want to load from S3 and not even hit public registries at all. But for now... Uh, I don't have a registry set up, so this is the easiest way to do this. I can also use ECR all the thing. I think ECR is expensive for small numbers of images. ECR pricing AWS. Hey, what's up, Yoda Join? Hello, hello. This server says, what did Firefox do to their Android app? It is complete garbage now. You can't even view a site's source code anymore, and no add-on works. Feels like an alpha version. Huh. Weird. I haven't used their mobile app in a long time. Hey, what's up, Jay Carey? Hello, hello. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome back. Uh, Polymath Man says, so the GCR image will have a different starts with. Yeah. Um, and 
Yes, and any any other registry will have a different starts with, um, but I'm just going to include this name here. Actually, this should be this name here. So we're going to use the Docker Hub, <laughs> the Docker Hub naming, but we're going to prefer GHCR. Uh, but basically, I'm going to try uh, ghcr.io slash precommit ci slash image uh, first, and then we're going to try docker.io slash precommit ci slash image next. Um, this this is the, the plan for what I want to do. It's, it is really annoying that this is different than this. Um, but Docker Hub does not allow you to have dashes in your username, so so that kind of sucks. Um, but hey, Jay Carey. Oh, I think I said hi to you already, but I'll say hi again. Welcome back. Good to see you. Yasin says, if I want to make a Python program that displays CPU temperatures, do I have to make a custom C Python to access low-level stuff? Hmm. I don't know. CPU temperature Python. Hmm. Uh, hey, what's up, Jokano? Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Hopefully you're doing well. Uh, if you're on Windows, it looks like you can use this thing, WMI. Windows Management Instrumentation. Uh, I wonder if there's a not Windows way to do this. I wonder if it's in CPU info. Proc CPU info. Uh, no. It is not in here. Look at all the <laughs> look at all the bugs that my CPU has. Meltdown, Spectre v1 v2, Spec Store bypass, L1 TF, MDS, Swap GS, Intel B, Multi Hit, and Shrubbles. Um, not sure. Uh, time to look at view stuff. I mean, it's worth learning anyway. Neil Pran says, what about key.io? Um, I mean, I'm not pushing to key.io right now, but um, I'm only pushing to these two places. But I know key could be another another place where I could mirror this as well. But key, Key's uh, public registry is really slow. Uh, these ones are both super fast, so I would prefer to use these ones. <clears throat> PlyMailerFan says, why not regex? Uh, I mean, no reason to use regex when uh, this works just fine. Um, but actually, while we're doing this, there's actually another change that I need to make here. GHCR.io slash precommit CI slash render image. Does this work? I don't think that works. I want to grab the latest, the current latest tag. Um, and we're going to be pinning images to make things more reproducible. Packages, this. And it looks like all of these images are the same tag. Um. Uh, but we are going to set this as our current image. <clears throat> uh, not in baddie. Pre commit CI slash CI. Currently, we have this kind of hard coded to pre commit colon one here. And so we're going to do this. Encode this value in a better way some other day. I agree. I agree, past me. We should do this better some other day. Uh, hey, what's up, Cannabel V? Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. But for now, this is fine, and I'm okay making a code change and deploying this code change anytime I want to change the current runner image. So this is not perfect, but it's it's good enough, I guess, for now. Uh, Cupid Lover says, not gonna lie, love you guys. Well, I'm, I'm glad you appreciate the stream. WDF Coding says, should be doable from a C extension at least. Yeah, probably. You could probably also do it with CFFI if you don't want to write a C extension. WDF Coding says, perhaps PySensors is an interface to libsensors. Oh, that might be useful. 
Uh, Yassine says, I tried them all, but somebody said that on Windows it's much harder to get hardware info because the architecture differs from CPU to another. Hmm. Hmm. And Cannonball has set the MOTD to MOTD. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I want, you know, hold on. <laughs> Um, I kind of want to make it so that the bot tells you how many times it's been set to MOTD, just because I think it's really funny when people do it. Uh, bot slash plugin slash MOTD. Um. <clears throat> Let's see if match let's see message equals MOTD updated Thanks for spending points if match message is equal to MOTD <laughs> uh, um, Async dev message count db connection message stir wait ensure MOTD table exists db query equals select count count one from MOTD where Message equals this async with db dot execute query. So what happens if you select count one from an empty table? SQLite three create table wet wet select count one from wet. Okay, cool. Uh, async with db.execute query as cursor. Await cursor.fetch1. Return right. Uh, message equals message uh, has been set to MOTD. count equals message count db match message uh cool it seems like a thing let's see if we set it to motd uh, set motd to bang motd Color chain object message count. God damn it. <laughs> oh, I hate async <laughs> Let's leave the bot running, actually. I forgot on a wait. Hey, what's up? Uh, Vivio Lima, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Hopefully, you are doing well. Uh, sorry, let me do this one more time. MOTD. Unhandled programming error. <sighs> I'm getting sloppy here. Oh, we need to do message. One more time. One more time. Oh god, that's not the one I want. MOTD to MOTD. Hey, there we go. Perfect. Uh, but we should delete the ones that I did, I guess. 
SQLite thing, db.db, select from MOT where user equals through its code. So good. Uh, a good um, rule of thumb when doing a delete query is to figure out what it's going to return first and message equals MOTD. Okay, so we are going to, instead of doing select star, we're going to delete from. Um, but anyway, cool. <laughs> now I'm super behind in chat. <laughs> Let's catch up. Uh, Juice says go to meetings. I see, I see. Uh, yes, he says, I guess it's time to learn CPython. The C API is actually pretty straightforward. Uh, Cannibal V says, why fuck Jinja? I assume that's from this thing here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is just one of the many things that I'm frustrated with Jinja about. Uh, Jinja is sort of Python-like. It supports a lot of Python syntax, but for whatever fucking reason, the spelling of none, true, and false in Jinja are lowercased instead of uppercased. Uh, I think it actually allows uppercase true and uppercase false, but it doesn't allow uppercase none. So this is a little hack to make um, none checks work in Jinja, which is which is quite annoying. But yes, that's why that's why I grumbled at Jinja in this code, and that's what that comment is about. Hey, what's up, Pseudo? Hello, hello. Welcome back. And Metal Storm! How's it going, Metal Storm? Good to see you again. And Polymathic Man. As well, as well. Those the weights will get you. Yeah. <laughs> indeed, indeed. <laughs> I goofed that one there. The Aerobot. Indeed, indeed. Uh, Ar Aron AADP. Hello, hello. <clears throat> Oh, wait, what? Oh, you set the MOTD to unhandle programming error. <laughs> You're trying to troll me, Michaela. I almost I almost got confused again there. I, you almost you almost got me. <laughs> hey, what's up, Voodoo? Hello, hello. Uh, Voodoo says, do you have... Have you done a video or stream about ASC Python? What is ASC Python, Voodoo? What do you, what do you mean? Interior next says, open a PR. <laughs> I think somebody opened a PR and it was closed. And it was closed. Uh, Brugmeyer says, Nunchuck, nunchuck, you expose yourself and see if they say truth or fate. Oh no. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Uh, how to make the biggest mistake of your life? Delete from MOTD. Yeah, we're not doing that. There's a lot of things in that table. I'm not going to delete them. Yo says, do you have a video on Updog? I do not have a video on Updog, Michaela. Ascending Python. ASCII Python. What do you mean by ASCII Python, Food 2? Do you mean like encodings? Updog looks pretty neat. <laughs> Is there actually a GitHub project for Updog? Updog is a replacement for Python's simple HTTP server. It allows uploading and uploading. Oh. They have passwords on the command line. We just talked about why this is a bad idea. Five shame, updog, five shame. <laughs> Recursive kernel panic says, what's up, Doc? <laughs> uh, welcome welcome back, Recursive kernel panic. Good to see you again. <clears throat> we just need to get Recursive chat back in the stream. One year and one month to be on the server. Congrats on your one year on the following. At least you have to click on up, Doc. <laughs> yeah, indeed, indeed. Okay, I'm going to go fill up my water. I'll be right back, and then we'll continue writing... The, the, the CODs somewhere. Where's that tab? This tab. We will continue working on this. Uh, but I will be right back and I will see you guys in a sec.
Hello. I'm back. Oh boy. What happened to chat while I was gone? Did you guys just run all the commands for some reason? Uh, everyone asks what's up dog, but no one asks how's up dog. Oh, you mean asynchronous Python. Yeah, I do have that on my list of things to go to talk about. Uh, this is not the right link. Uh, but yeah, I need to combine those so that I can just go here. Um, Async.io, yeah, it's on this list. The thing is, I don't actually know that much about Async.io. Well, I do, like I know how it works and I kind of get the idea. Um, actually, I, I think I understand async. <laughs> I just don't think I'm qualified to talk about it because I don't really like it or use it all that much. But, but yeah, I guess I, I could talk about async. It is on the list. <clears throat> hey, what's up, Rolfie7? Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Uh, one year and six months, Solace. Damn. Wait, Michaela, you've only been following for 10 months? What? I feel like you've been here for forever. Is that, is that legit? Or did you unfollow and refollow? Huh. Huh. <clears throat> There's a big fire in San Mateo right now. Oh no, is there another fire in San Mateo? Uh... Huh. Hmm. Four alarm fire on Sign Hill. Where is this? Ridge, Ridgeview Court and Hillside Boulevard. Ridgeview Court, Hillside, BLVV, San Mateo County. Where is this? How far away is this from me? Oh, this is pretty far away. Yeah, I'm done here. That fire is way up here. Okay, so we're good. <laughs> yeah. These these hills up here, I guess, are burning. Um, but yeah, I guess we're fine. But yeah. <clears throat> Rolfi says, please, please don't, please don't stalk me in the. Uh, uh, Please, please don't. <laughs> I don't know why you would do that. <clears throat> Mods, why are you sleeping? <laughs> I guess Juice has meetings. Uh, Solus says, I know that async await in JavaScript is just syntax sugar for promises. I assume it's the same in Python. Yeah, it just calls double under. I mean, there aren't, there, there isn't really a promise type in Python. There is an awaitable, which has a double under await function. But, um, but yeah. Um, that's, that's a thing. Uh, Catherine's been following for 10 months too. Huh. Hmm. Daily City won't know if it's smoke or fog. It's kind of true. It's kind of true. Okay. Um, but yeah, so I, I basically want to pull this. I did some timing yesterday and it takes about 30 seconds on, um... Takes about 30 seconds on on my AWS machines to pull from either of these registries. Uh, the average was like 30.5 seconds, and um, and the slowest was 38 seconds. So I think I'm gonna set a timeout at about 60 seconds per pull, and I think I'm gonna try twice. Here's the panic says, why import so many things when you can do from star import star? Well, you can't actually do that. There's no from star. Uh, Proner J says, hello, hello. Welcome back. Good to see you, Proner J. Proner J also streams. You guys should, should check out Proner J's channel. Uh, Pro, Pro, Proner J. There we go. Mikhail says, I never hear Anthony say Dunder. Yeah, I don't like, I don't like Dunder. Something about Dunder really rubs me the wrong way. I like to say double, double under to be more, uh, more precise, more specific, more correct. Um, but, yeah. 
<laughs> what? Dunder sounds like Dunder Mifflin. Yeah. Yeah, it does sound like Dunder Mifflin. Uh... Oh boy. Uh, push of change to sorry, emails. Is not initiated in private request. Sorry, this is a dumb question. Which my get a repo. Get it correctly launches the action. All improvements are executed, but somehow the action does not initiate updating or reformatted code. Uh, um, with token. Yes, this looks fine. Um, that looks fine. On push, that's the problem. The pushback behavior is only enabled for pull requests, not pushes directly to branches. <clears throat> Easy. Um, and then we've got this patch, which which normalizes these to use use fixtures instead of this when a sem files is not utilized. That looks good. Do I have to rebase your branch is the question. Dang it. I do. I do, I do. Take your commit message though. Ah. What is your GitHub handler? Marco, Marco Gorelli. This one. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. They use two different emails. To squash and use this commit message. And interesting that it picked the second email address. I'm kind of surprised by that. Um, but it's the one that makes more sense, I guess, anyway. Git push Marco head dash F. <clears throat> <laughs> Request of Colonel Panic is set the MOT to type MOTD to view the MOT. <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. Mill tanks have dunders. I guess. Uh, the answer says, what is the difference between my list dot double under len and len my list? Nothing. Those are exactly the same thing. see. Uh, technically the second one is going to be ever so slightly faster <laughs> due to dumb reasons. Um, but x dot len is the same as len of x. Uh, in fact this is just a shortcut built in to access the double demo under function. I guess I could um, between this and Ugh, typing this is really annoying in, in chat. There we go. I gotta escape the markdown because I don't think my code does that. Uh, this will be ever so slightly slower because it calls two functions to get the answer. Although, it might have a shortcut for C extension types where it won't actually call, it won't involve a Python function call, it'll just involve a C function call. Because uh, I think it'll look at tp len. 
for those? Actually, we can look. We can look at the answer. We can figure out what it does there. We don't have to guess. We can figure it out because it is open source. Or it should be in Python and then Blitten module. Just spelled around for some reason. It's actually really annoying. Uh, built in len. My object size. Oh, who knows where that's gonna live? Probably in object.c. Oh, maybe we can do jump to code. Is that a thing? Or is C Python too big to do that? Damn it. Yo! Eric.dev Eric, blah, 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 blah. Eric with the fat raid? What's up, Eric.dev? What were you working on today? You, my, my viewers should check out Eric. Uh, Eric.dead, yeah. <laughs> hey, what's up, the Alta 4? How's it going as well? You guys should check out Alta 4 as well. Um, okay, okay, okay. I'm super behind on chat. Um, but but wel welcome, welcome, Raiders. Oh my goodness, so many followers. <laughs> Holy. Um... But yeah, let me explain what I'm working on, and then I will catch up on chat, because I'm super far behind right now. Um, but my name is Anthony, and I'm currently working on a startup-y startup thing called Precommit CI. And the idea behind Precommit CI is to take a linter and code formatter framework that I've written called Precommit. Um, and, and the idea behind Precommit is you have a config file with tools and linters. It integrates with Git hooks. It can install all those tools, so you don't need them installed at your system. And uh, it manages all of this in user space, and then it'll run it against files in your repository. Uh, but I'm building a GitHub app for this, and I'll read I'll read the little spiel, which Kinbiko helpfully wrote for me. I edited it a little bit. Uh, developers spend a fair chunk of time during their development flow on fixing relatively trivial problems in their code. Precommit CI both enforces that these issues are discovered, which is often for each developer's workflow via precommit, but it also fixes the issues automatically, letting developers focus their time on more valuable problems. And so we're working on getting the, you know, some of the finishing touches on being able to release the alpha version of this today. So we're we're getting the full end-to-end -end flow uh, working without, without any human intervention. So it'll all just, you know, infrastructure as code magically happen. And, um, the last part of that is pulling Docker images, and then we'll do some other stuff as well with uh, resource constraints. But that's what we're working on today. Welcome, Raiders. What were you working on today, Eric? Uh, and Godutis and finally generated an Aqua Funkalistic Booty Wap. <laughs> that's a great name. <laughs> and uh, Philip Key and Cristiano Developer, thank you all for the follow. Welcome to the stream. I assume you are all from Eric's raid. Thank you again for the raid. Really appreciate that. Um, Kid Cub, you weren't following before? Kid Cub is another streamer. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Um, hopefully, hopefully y'all are doing well. Uh, cool. Another MHD is recursive. I love recursion. Recursion is great. Recursion is life. Recursion is love, says Recursive Colonel Panic. Indeed, indeed. Um, aliases. Kind of, kind of, kind of. Dubliner Lend is the underlying part that makes something lengthable. Don't do a video on it. Hmm. Uh, the other four says, to be fair, I never really liked that part of Python. Yeah, it is a little bit too magical. They're the same, but kind of not. Yeah, I was actually going to look where... Uh, get grep pi object size in star dot c, and I need dash capital E. Really? Is that now how this works? Are you an alias too? Oh, I'm in the wrong repository, that's why. <laughs> there we go. Objects slash abstract. By object size. This shouldn't have a shortcut for TP size. Oh. That's weird. If the type object has a TP as sequence and it has sequence length. Oh yeah, this is the C shortcut, I see. Otherwise it uses pi mapping size. 
Hi, mapping size. Oops. What are, how are you defined? Here we go. Otherwise it tries to convert it to a mapping. <laughs> Interestingly, down here it tries to do uh, sequencing again. Weird. Very weird. Whoa, and KitKab is also subscribed. Thank you for the subscription. Also, oh, I forgot to give you a shout out as well. Uh, my viewers should check out KitKab as well. <clears throat> Let's see, we've got Arshliz who says raid. Eric <laughs> dead. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Uh, and Aquafunkalistic Bootywap also in the chat as well. The Alter Force says uh, you've got two Eric's with a K in the chat. Now that's true. That's true because you were an Eric as well. Goddess says, nice keyboard. Yeah, if you want to check out the keyboard, you can do bang keyboard and learn more about that. <clears throat> Eric.dev says, uh, Arsh, Arshlisa, I always am really bad at pronouncing their name, uh, and I are doing a Docker and Kubernetes AMA. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Uh, oh, Arshlis. Yeah, wait. <laughs> I'm, I'm bad at pronouncing either way. Um, but that's really cool. Yeah, we're working with Podman today, which is a container. I mean, it's it's Docker, it's OCI Docker images. So, um, but yeah, we're we're working with um, with Dockerish stuff today. Uh, we actually open sourced the Docker image for it on the last stream, so you guys can check that out. It's you know it's not fully featured yet, but um, I'm just kind of trying to get you know basics working, minimally viable product, and and then I'll incrementally improve it from there. But this is the this is the Docker image that we were doing last time, which is basically just install a bunch of Pythons, uh, set this environment variable, activate a virtual environment, and install pre-commit into this uh, requirements.txt, or into this virtual via requirements.txt. And uh, run with dominant, which is pretty cool. Uh, Johaya says, you mentioned pre-commit install stuff in user space. I've always had a nebulous understanding of user space. Is the idea that pre-commit won't mess up with your mess with your system by then? Yes. So the way pre-commit installs, and this is implementation details, so don't uh, don't depend on this. Uh, let's actually pre-commit GC so it cleans up some of those because there's probably a lot laying around. Yeah, 32 that weren't needed. Um, but yeah, so pre-commit will install each of the tools inside this cache directory. And inside there, there's a repo directory. So let's look at repo 1ADF, for instance. This is, what is this tool? I don't know what it is just based on promote-v. It is Flake 8, I see. So this is a, this particular clone is a clone of Flake 8, and inside this, pre-commit will set up virtual environments and install the tools locally in there. Uh, when I talk about user space, what I mean here is that you don't need root, you don't need to install anything on your system globally, and um, you know it shouldn't interfere with any of your other environments. It'll, it'll install things completely separately. Arsha says, Kida is using pre-commit right now, by the way. Oh. Are they using pre-commit pre-commit or a different pre-commit? <clears throat> Code quality. Oh, they're using pre-commit pre-commit. Awesome. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I created this thing, so that's pretty dope. I wonder what um I wonder what tools they're using. They're using oh, this is not supported. <laughs> Uh, they're using the pre-commit hooks one, they're using DocTalk, which is a good one, and they are using... Ooh! Oh, this is great! I love this. This is great. Although... Oh, they don't need this. This is the default. I was like, why do they have pass file names false? But it's they have pass file names true. That is pretty great. I like this. I really like this a lot. Um, to enforce, uh, enforce good language here. Um, the quotes don't do anything there, but that's cool. Nice, and they use Golang Sea Island. Awesome. That's pretty dope. Uh, Aquafunkalistic Booty Paps has got it on the first try to. Indeed, indeed. Recursion is recursion is recursion is recursion, indeed. 
Um, and thank you again for subscribing, Kid Quet. Really appreciate that. <clears throat> Whew, I thought Anthony had somehow messed up the regex. No, I was in the wrong in the wrong repo. In the wrong repository. And Kid Cap, you just flexing that new emote. Hello, hello, good to see you. Mr. Jake says, I like my braces and strong typing. I also like curly braces and strong typing too. Which oh no, why am I using Python? <laughs> Mewtru says, will this 12-hour stream feature amazing guests Mewtru and Vape Juice Jordan? Uh, yeah, very well could. Also, welcome, welcome Mewtru. How's it going? Um, yeah, the plan, so the next, the next, uh, wait, did True also raid me? No. True's just here, because True's hanging out. Um, uh, yeah, we'll be doing a 24-hour, or 24-hour, 12-hour stream. The plan is to do it on the 31st of October. So, scratch scratch that into your calendar, uh, because Michaela redeemed the 12-hour stream. Um, and yeah, if you guys are around, feel free to stop by and be some amazing programmer guests. Um, but yeah, the, the, there isn't all that much planned for that stream, other than we're going to be doing some, uh, some Hack the Box stuff, or some CTF stuff, because that's what Michaela wanted, because Michaela redeemed the points. Um, but yeah, that'll be coming up at the end of the month, so that should be pretty fun. <clears throat> uh, the other four says, you rated Oh Bother. Wait, who's Oh Bother? What, what a, tell, tell me about them. I, I'm not sure I'm familiar with their channel. Uh, the answer says, is it normal to have the type on a new line? It looks kind of wrong. Yeah, I, it's, a, it's a style that gets used in C code a lot. I'm not really sure. Like, I get the reason why. Um, or at least I understand one reason why, which is exactly what I just used it for, which is kind of nice. Uh, but I don't like to put functions like that. Um, but it did make it, yeah, like, I like to define my functions like this one here or like this one here. It looks like they're inconsistent here. Which is interesting. Um, but it definitely does make searching for the uh, function signature a lot easier. Like, I, I know that there's going to be only one thing that's going to start with pydict clear free list, and so I could use git grep to find it. Um, so there's one benefit there. I just, I agree. I think it looks ugly. I like to write my functions like this. <laughs> Actually, in fact, I like to write my functions like this. Um, but... That is just me. I think C5M picks this style for a couple of reasons. Like one is um, these types used to be optional and I think you can actually still do this and it still works in modern C. Um, you might need this. I don't remember. <laughs> but there's there's an alternate C syntax for like really, really old ANSI C that still works. But yeah. Hey, what's up Pragmatic Lou? Hello, hello, good to see you. Mr. Shake says .NET stream, let's go. I mean, I might be able to do some .NET. So actually, I do have a plan to do a stream with some .NET stuff at some point. Um, the What I want to do is hook up my Nintendo Switch here and then make a program, like a clear Windows app overlay on top of my Switch. Uh, my Switch isn't plugged in, so right now there's no signal here. And um, have something so that I can like click controls with my mouse and have it like you know, wander around in game, um, which I think would be cool, uh, but and get my like keyboard controller thing working because I, I never really got that working. Um, but I have I have the code for it and I know what I want to do with it. Uh, I just <laughs> I just have to I have too many projects. I gotta finish my pre commit CI thing first before I start being oops super ambitious with other projects. But that's that's one thing that I want to do in C sharp at some point. <clears throat> but yeah. Uh, Solis says, who's doing the points for the 12 hour stream? Michaela already spent the points, so it's it's already happening. Uh, Rolish says, there's so many programmers in chat today. Indeed, indeed. We've got me, we've got Alta 4, we've got Mewtru, we've got Juicebox Hero. <clears throat> Angel Next says, I don't have 100k, I have 101k. What can I do with it? Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> We're not doing a 24 hour stream. That's not, that's not happening. We tried to do it once, and um, yeah. Pragmatic Lou says, I dreamt of you and your Ubuntu show. <laughs> That's a little bit weird. Uh, hey, what's up, Kevink? Kevink, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Hopefully you're doing well. 
Hilda Force says he's a hardware guy who works a lot in his workshop on stream, and I, as a hardware lover, just drool at all of his cool tools and stuff. Ooh, I am by all means a hardware noob. I I do not Yeah, I am not I'm not um I'm not super like I I kind of understand some of the stuff and like I can follow a wiring diagram and I used to know how to like plot voltages and resistance and stuff but I am I am by and far not a hardware person personally. Um <clears throat> Is the pull request from a fork? Maybe. Uh, but yeah, I'm not. I'm not a hardware person. Uh, but yeah, I think it would be pretty cool, Proner J. So it says, Andy trying to build a script to honor hatch shinies in Pokemon. No, I don't want to. I don't want it to be like cheating, cheating. I don't want it to be like fully automatic. I want it to still be like I have to interact. I have to still play the game. Um, like I, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't want to just completely automate the game because that ruins the fun. I might as well just like actually cheat at that point. Uh, Polyfan says, putting it on the calendar. Oh yeah, I should put it on my channel calendar. They made it. Okay, good. Uh, calendar. And then... What time did we start the last 12-hour stream? Because that actually worked out pretty well. I think we started at 10 a.m.? Yeah, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. was actually pretty decent. So I think we'll do that again. Oh, that's Halloween. Hmm. Does that mean I also have to dress up for it? Hmm. Hmm. Is this a bad idea to do it on Halloween? Hmm. 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 Yeah, that, that probably means I also have to dress up for it. <clears throat> but anyway, we're going to delete that one. But yes, in theory we will be doing a Halloween 12-hour spooky stream. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, do do uh mostly weird says pragmatic blue i agree i agree so everybody says i got a monitor arm for my second monitor today so it doesn't have to limp next to my prior one. Ooh, nice noob 404 says you're poking around c python yeah we were looking at um the difference between len and double double under len so it says i mean i do that you're doing the work in a program and the pokemon will still have legit stats yeah but i don't know i, I think i'd still rather be the person driving the machine <clears throat> uh he didn't know Halloween was on the thirty I mean it's on the thirty first every year. I'm just it's it's still March for me. It's the two hundredth day of March. Can we see Femboy Anthony on the thirty first? I think we got enough Femboy Anthony on, on the last twelve hour stream. Um <laughs> do, do you guys wanna see Femboy Anthony? I'm pretty sure there's a clip of it. Pretty sure there's a clip of it, right? Top of, top of all time. Uh, am I dolled up in this clip? Um, yeah. <laughs> yep. No, I'm not dolled up in this so clip. This, this is before. Goal, in case you're wondering. This is before I got dolled up. <laughs> um. Let's see if someone can find it that would be great i know there's i know there's a clip of it there's definitely a video of it too i guess we could just go i, I did clip all the videos we can just go to youtube <clears throat> youtube playlists streams 206 streams in this playlist Oh, we're gonna have to scroll way through this. Man, we've streamed a lot since the 12 hour stream. Stream highlights, no, no, that's the 24 hour one. Here we go, here's the 12 hour one. And pause. 
makeover results. All right, here's here's me with with makeup on, looking like a pretty lady. There's there's pretty pretty lady Anthony. <laughs> Anyway, that happens. So, I'm a very pretty lady. <clears throat> uh, the other voice says probably, possibly not this stream this year since everyone's gonna be inside. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that is true. Polymath Man says just a chance for more buttons. Yeah. <laughs> Hope there are no tricks or treats this year. Yeah, me too. People should stay inside. KitKat says, Alt F4 costume, toss on some glasses and have a recording with Toda on the left. Done. Easy. <laughs> Ship it. <laughs> yeah, Alt F4 says that uh, he has an impersonation of me, but I have, I have yet to hear it. So we'll, we'll have to we'll have to see what that what that's all about. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I feel like I'm pretty easy to uh, to impersonate, so we'll we'll see we'll see what happens there. <clears throat> she just looks so happy there. Yeah, she was very happy to doll me up. Uh, New 44 says, for Halloween, write some spooky code with globals and allocated memory you don't free. Hey, you know, uh, C programs are faster if they if they just call malloc and don't call free. Free, free takes time. Wait, what the fuck are those eyes? Those are those are my eyeballs. Those are those are those are my actual eyeballs. I mean, the blue doesn't show up as much on this camera because this camera has like really terrible color balance. Um, and the reason they showed up a lot better on um, Juice's camera because uh, that was that was filmed in the other room on Juice's computer, uh, which she brought over for that stream. Uh, but Juice has the Snapchat camera and it it does some auto color balance fixing stuff. Uh, hey, what's up, Yoko DeGill? Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Hopefully you're doing well. Uh, M2Dev.net, good to see you again. Anthony and thigh highs. <laughs> you just want to see feet again. Roller says, Anthony writes code, what are your pronouns? He, he, him are my program pro pronouns, or do you mean in, in that, in that, uh... <clears throat> Is the pull request from a fork? Repo belongs to an organization that I belong to. Uh, this looks fine. Uh, can you show me a screenshot of the title portion of the PR? It should show where the branch is coming from and going to, and that will help me debug from that. Configuration. The only explanation that I have is that secrets are not enabled because it is an outside pull request. Even if you own both of the repositories, GitHub will only give secrets to PRs coming from the repository itself. <laughs> uh, the other four stream says, I realized I can say how you say stream. Stream. Do I say stream funny? It's a good word. Is it because I put a lot of emphasis on the stream? Your microphone has a lot of shadow on your face today. You're right. I'm not sure what that is. I think if I move this a little bit, can you guys still hear me? Does that still sound fine? I've moved the microphone a little bit further away, so now when I, I lean in, I don't get shadowed as much by it. Um, but yeah, it's if I if I hide behind my microphone, um, it puts me in shadow because my my light thingy is right over here. <clears throat> Stream. His pronouns are programmer, programmer, and programmer. Uh, hey, what's up, Yoko DeGill? Hello, hello. Wait a minute. Did I already say hi to you? Oh, you followed. I see. That makes sense. I, that makes sense. Uh, she always wants to see feet. It's true. If chat could pay for your nudes, they would. They probably would, Alta 4. I don't have an OnlyFans, though. Or a whole nudes account. Gotta get... Gotta get Jordan on that. To make me... Make make us that whole nudes. Um, hey, what's up, Radio Raider? Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. 
Has Anthony joined Whole News yet? I have not, not, not make. Also, welcome, welcome back. Good to see you. Uh, Yonadroid says, There was a time when I thought that CPython and Scython were the same thing. Yo, me too, until I realized that it was not just a typo. <laughs> it's actually pretty confusing. I've seen a lot of cases where people are talking about CPython, but they say Scython. And the opposite also. But, uh, Cupid Lover says, Good night, peeps. Keep up the good work. Well, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you around. Um, programmer, keyboard fucker, and programmer. <laughs> uh, don't answer that, chat. <laughs> well, now this says you say everything in a funny way, especially Jason. Jason! I don't actually say Jason like that, but I do like to say it funny because it sounds funny, you know? Uh, Yoko Gill says you said it twice. Well, my bad. Sometimes, so I do have a little thing where I try and keep track of where I am in chat by clicking, and it it gives me a little marker so I can see where, where I've read chat. Sometimes I forget to click because I'm not so great at remembering. But I try my best, but yeah. I try my best. Hey, what's up, Rima? Hello, hello. Uh, Mikael says he's a pogrammer until he gets all dressed up and then he's a pogrammy. What? Whole Nudes Developers candle Calendar. Yo. We could do some, we could probably do some tasteful stuff. It's just all of us with our laptops and coffee cups. That's all we have. All we have is laptops and coffee cups. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Let's actually write some fucking code today because we have not written any yet. Okay, so I want to give two retries to each of these. So for I uh, in range two... Um, let's see, why is this not working? Um, we need to pull as this special PC runner user and, and what? Um, uh, equals sub process dot run. Uh, I wonder if Podman has a special thing for this. Podman pull dash dash help. Because I want to pull to a different local tag. Pull. Hmm. I think I have to pull and then retag afterwards. Which is fine. Pull dash dash all tags? That's a thing? That seems like such a bad idea. Okay. Anyway. Uh, sudo dash u pc runner i guess for attempted tag in ghcr.io slash precommit ci slash image or docker.io slash precommit ci slash image so For attempted tag in tags, for tag in tags. <clears throat> uh, do we want to do timeout inside sudo or outside sudo? We'll do it inside sudo. Timeout and timeout. We're going to give it 30 seconds to, or no, we're going to give it 60 seconds. Timeout 60 dash K. Uh, dash dash kill after equals 61. We'll give it one second to do its cleanup. Uh, we'll give it five seconds, sure. That seems decent. And it will send sig term by default and kill after that. Foreground. I'm not running directly to a shell prompt. Oh, we don't care about T2I signals. We don't need preserve status. Uh, Podman pull tag. Uh, hey, what's up? Adolf Font, thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Uh, Pragmatically says, maybe you should add a local time to your stream. Um, it's actually right here. <laughs> and chat always reminds me of this because it shows up in my videos too. Uh, but it is actually right up here. It is actually 1.43 p.m. in my time. 
Um, uh, Ch Chami, Chami Kawi, welcome back. Good to see you again. It says, imagine being called jQuery. Wait, is somebody's name jQuery? Oh, <laughs> uh, that's amazing. That is amazing. <clears throat> Um, so it says, I was going to make a stonks, a stonks app called S Stocks, but the only API that allows for a few calls for minutes. Oh, I see. Remus says, stay hydrated, fam, fam, pals, pals, fam. I'm going to stay hydrated. It's working. Uh, Satan's linker nipple <laughs> has just followed. <laughs> Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Uh... The other part says, get fetch, dash dash all, dash dash prune. Yeah, actually, little pro tip, the alt F4, Eric. Little, little tip, Eric. You can tell get to always prune, which is kind of dope. Um, I think I actually have a video about this. Yeah, I have a video about this. Um, but yeah, you can tell get to always prune. I wish you could tell it to always all, but I have not found an option for that, unfortunately. A witch, Eric. Indeed, Eric. That time, <laughs> the Alta Four. I guess. I guess I can disambiguate by using your actual handles. Um, but yes, this is this is a pretty pro tip that I'm I'm handing out to you guys. Also, <laughs> lol. <laughs> um, Deputy if you coding says I never noticed that before. Oh, the time. Yeah, yeah. Chat sometimes notices it. Hey, what's up, Adolf Font, who has set the MOT to high? <clears throat> Yo says, I always make this joke, but never thought to actually look up the name. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. Jake, Jake Weary, that's actually, that's amazing. Do you guys know about Jake Query? You guys know about Jake Query? Oh, it has a sound too. That's gonna get claimed for sure. <laughs> uh, hey, what's up, BK the Awesome? Hello, hello. What a username, right? Uh, hey, what's up, EL1997? Welcome, welcome to the stream. Have you been here before? Your name sounds familiar. If so, welcome back. Do you have your .files on GitHub? Kind of. I've actually been planning to put them in I'll do Forge repository at some point. Um, I don't actually have that much in in the way of dot files, um, but you can check this out here. Uh, actually, we can go over all of my dot files really quickly because they are all relatively short. Um, and this is the last dot file. Okay, bash aliases. I don't have very many of them. Uh, these ones enable more color on the terminal. That's what these do. This is because I learned TF while I was working at uh, Lyft. I didn't realize that the actual command is called Terraform, and so my muscle memory is in, in, infused into my brain to use TF, so I have alias this. This is perhaps the only actual real alias that I use in my programming. Um, I have these for typos and to force Babby. <laughs> and I have these ones which are a little bit meme uh, If you say, like... What the fuck, Ruby? It'll say, what the fuck indeed, Ruby? And if you cry, it'll give you a sad face. And if you do cry softly, it will still give you a sad face. Um, and if you do cry with vigor, it will also still give you a sad face. Which is why there's all of this crazy fucking quoting going on here. Because I need a subshell to ignore arguments. And I need to do special quoting to put a single quote inside of a single quote inside of a double quote inside of a single quote. So that's, that's what this shenanigans is. Uh, but those are my aliases. This is my bash RC. Most of this is comment copied from the default Ubuntu one. Uh, hey, what's up, the Kiwi Fruit Bird? Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. I enable history. For some reason, UMask changed between 1804 and 2004, so I've put it back to the value in 1804. This makes it so that other users by default cannot, or other groups by default cannot write my files. Uh, I have overridden the command not found handle to do this silly thing. <laughs> Because sometimes I forget to activate my virtual environments. Here, I'll give you an example. Um, so here I have a VM directory, which is... Oh, that's off screen. 
I have a VM directory, which is what I conventionally use for my virtual environments. And I haven't activated my virtual env here. Let's actually pick up a binary that's in there. Uh, coverage. So if we do coverage dash dash version, um, that little command not found handle will uh, print this message. You forgot to activate VM, I got you. And then it'll immediately rerun that command. So it'll uh, remove one part from the command and then run it and then return the exit code here. Otherwise, if it's garbage, it'll return not found. So it's it's still a compliant command not found. This also gets rid of the, not really telemetry, but like the one where it kind of asks uh, upstream about packages that might exist with this, with this command. I, I don't like it phoning out to that. Oh no, we dropped some frames. Not the frames. God damn it. Uh, hey, what's up, Hen Utzig? Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Uh, this is my PS1. It's essentially the same as the Debian one, except I've put a new line here so that it renders better in chat so that you guys can see the commands I type. Um, <clears throat> I enable colors and completion for ls and dir and less. Uh, I source my aliases, I put a bin directory in my home directory on the path, so this bin directory ends up on my path. I set a prompt command which automatically initializes pre-commit here. Uh, I also use activator. Activator allows me to cd into a repository that has these files, activate.sh and deactivate.sh, and you'll notice that it automatically activated my, activated my virtual env. Um, I set this Python startup, what does that do? I think it's for tab complete. Yeah, tab completion. This is, I think it's unnecessary now. I think tab complete is on by default in Python 3, 4 plus, although sometimes I use Python 2, so. And I use this for Debian stuff. Uh, this is my git config typos. I turn off hints for status. I turn on color. I remove this because the completion is buggy. This is not actually a command, but for some reason the get completion includes it. I prune when I fetch. I use this to send emails. I use Babby as my editor, and this is my name and email address. Uh, get ignore. Yeah, that was helpful. Um, sometimes I use Mercurial. I really don't like Mercurial. Uh, but these are that's my config there. I don't know what this does. I have no idea. Have you paste it at some point? This is my nano RC. When I used to use nano, I no longer do. Um, but these are all the default settings in Babby, so. Um, PyPI RC, I use this to upload to PyPI. This is my tab completion thing that I already showed you. This is my Tmux configuration, which is use 256 color, enable the mouse, and <laughs> I don't actually use this anymore, but uh, when I used to deploy code at Yelp, we had to type in the date as a drunk check and sometimes I liked deploying when I was drunk, so I put the date in the bottom so I would never have to like fumble for the date. I could just like, you know, look in my terminal and see what it is and bypass the drunk check. And the last is my theme. Uh, this is the theme that I use for Babby. And um, yeah, it's the Visual Studio Code dark theme, but I have one addition to it, which is this. Uh, which makes these headers in INI files uh, colored and darker. But anyway, that is all those things. I'm sorry my internet's being shitty. <laughs> it's supposed to be fixed, but clearly is not, so I gotta grumble at my provider again. And now I gotta catch up on chat. <clears throat> Altipor says, you done configed me. <laughs> Uh, Yoko Degil says, I don't know about jQuery. Oh, so the idea between jQuery and jQuery is an extra E. And uh, I don't know why, but get, Google has stopped showing the the little subtext there. Uh, it used to say that jQuery is the gayest JavaScript library. Oh, here it is. Making your JavaScript a little bit gayer. That's why there's there's unicorns and rainbows and ponies, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. So it's GeoCitiesy, indeed, indeed. 
Uh, EL says, I've been here once or twice, I think. Well, welcome back. Good to see you. Hey, what's up, Void Rose? Hello, hello. Delta Force says, awesome streamer RC. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't done this yet, but... There, there are not files here, and a whole butt ton of stars. <laughs> this is how you set up your Vim RC. LS Vim RC. <laughs> uh. El says, "I don't understand any of the code, but it's nice to be here and listen, or something." Nice. Well, I'm I'm glad you're here. Uh, Solo says it was yesterday years old when I learned that the JavaScript name is actually owned by Java and the official name of the language is ECMAScript. It's owned by Java? I thought it was owned by Netscape. Uh, Boomer says, check out the fug. Yeah, I've seen the fug before. It's pretty good. Uh, ooh, the Alta 4, you've got an unnecessary use of cat there. You should just do grep, grep bash history for cry. Um, oops, I did it backwards. <laughs> anyway, there we go. I don't know why it's zero. Maybe because it's an alias, it doesn't show up. Uh, what? Oh, probably, so these are the most recent commands. It only will save this history once I exit the shell. Uh, but I don't actually type cry all that often. I used to type it more, though. <clears throat> Hybrid Triple X says, doesn't having aliases for typos just reinforce the typos? Yes, it absolutely does. You're absolutely right, Hybrid Triple X, uh, which is why I still type nano setup.cfg, except my text editor is called Babby now. Uh, but nano is an alias for Babby. <laughs> so yes, it absolutely does that. <clears throat> why can't I hold these frames, indeed? Uh, Tuber says, does the download package X actually call the internet? It used to. I don't know if it still does, um, but it used to. Hey, what's up, Rizix? Hello, hello. Good to see you again. The other four says, oh, dear God, don't do drunk deploys. Problem solved. Where's the fun in that? <laughs> oh, we dropped a whole bunch of frames. Oh, this is not good. This is very not good. Oh, this is very not good. God damn it. Well, I guess I'm going to phone up my internet service provider again and be like, Hey, we fixed the electricity. Why do you still suck? And maybe they'll fix it. Maybe not. Do you type apt move very often? I have not typed that in a while. Is that the super cow powers thing? Have you moved today? I have not, but, but now I've moved three times. <clears throat> Uh, Nick Roy says, there is, is there an advantage in using a split keyword? So the idea behind a split keyword is that your arms are naturally at about a shoulder's width apart, and so if you were to place them down on a keyboard, now granted, my, my keyboards aren't, I mean, if I was, I was doing it more properly, they would be about this far apart, um, and then my arms would be at a more natural position. Um, also, you can't really see it from the stream or from that camera, but they're actually propped up on a 15 degree angle. Um, and so it gives your hands like a more natural position and it's supposed to be good for ergonomics. I've never really struggled with ergonomics problems, so it's not, you know, <laughs> the split keyboard isn't really for me. Um, but, but yeah, it's cool. I like it. Works well. And we got a fancy email that says rollers as shown in chat. JavaScript trademark is owned by Oracle. Man, fucking Oracle. Fuck Oracle. Um... <clears throat> Uh, actually, I think I know what's happening here. If pre-commit would fail on the second invocation, if pre-commit fails on the second invocation, you can't push to the branch because GitHub Actions does not fire on pushes made by GitHub Actions. So instead it marks the job as failed. Let's see if they have double outputs here. They have one set of outputs here. Oh, two things are fighting, yeah. Um. Uh, 
I notice you also have both double quote string, double quote string fixer, and black. The two tools disagree on formatting of strings unless you pass dash s, skip string normalization to black, and so your job will always fail. Um, <clears throat> think Roy says, makes sense, thanks. Yeah, no problem. And if you want to learn more about the keyboard, you can do bang keyboard, and I have both a video and um, YouTube link, or uh, Amazon links if you want to check this out. Um, Delta Force says, that's not because of your three chained ifs, is it? What three chained ifs? Where's my three chained ifs? Oh, you mean in, in this code here? Are you reading the source of this thing? Where, where? This one? If, if, if. If, if. Where's the... Um... Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of annoying, but that's the way things go. Uh, Sola says, pretty sure Oracle sponsored, this is an Oracle sponsored stream, they put you in a Cyberman suit and have you delete all the competitors. <laughs> oh, the Python thing. The one that I made fun of you for. I don't remember which thing you made fun of me for, Eric. You'll have to remind me. I don't remember. Uh, hey, what's up, I satisfied? Hello, hello. How are you doing? Mm, can close some of these tabs. Let's actually write some damn code. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna send standard out to subprocess dot dev no. Actually, what happens if we do get post, uh, podman pull dash q? Can I get the output directly? Man pull dash q bun to focal. Do you tell me the version? Oh, you do. Oh, that's so nice. That way, I don't have to do another sub process again. Man pull dash dash help. Is it dash dash quiet? That's just quiet. Indeed. That's nice. Quiet. There we go. Send standard error dev null. Later I'll do some like error handling and actually show the user what this error is, but for now, we're gonna do it like this. Uh oh, the, the three times thing. Yeah. <laughs> yes, the um <laughs> I know what you're talking about. The thing on my stream, I thought you were talking about your stream, and I was like, what? This code. This this triple, this is flaky for some reason. Install Ruby or install Ruby or install Ruby thing. <laughs> Listen, okay. This looks jank, but it's actually genius. <laughs> this is actually big brain. It looks dumb, but it's big brain. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, if rat uh, return code equals zero, return rat dot standard out dot strip dot decode. Otherwise, what? Raven Master says new interview question right there. <laughs> Gonna be hard to sell that one, champ. I mean, the amount of code I would have to write to do a, a retry loop here is kind of ridiculous. Uh, let's see, there is a retry command, right? Retry command dash. Mm, no, I'd have print a loop. 
Yeah, look at how much code I'd have to write to do that. Uh... Also, this has a shell injection bug. LOL. You guys want to see the shell injection bug? Cause this is this is unquoted here, so this isn't actually trying to run. Oh, what's local dash r? Maybe I'm misunderstanding how this works. These are like array, and I just don't understand how this thing works. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, not locale, I want local. There we go, local. What's up, Jzang H? Thank you, or Jzang 8, not H. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Uh, local option. What are the options? Option can be any of the options accepted by declare. God damn it. I gotta find declare somewhere up here. Need up. Help. FG. Exit. Enable. Declare. Here we go. Declare. Dash. R? Make names read only. Huh. So that's not what it is. It's just a read only variable. I don't think this makes it an array. I don't know, there's something something weird here. Uh what this should have been is dollar at quoted here, I believe correctly. Double quotes? Oh. Are you saying that if I do Oh yeah, here you can see that it did this it did splitting here. Wait, what did I change? Did I did I change this? No, I just put set dash x. Yeah, so if I do python dash c print hello world, then uh, this will give us index error. Oh, of course I need python three because the uh, the quoting is wrong. And to fix that, we can do this. <clears throat> Should we fix it for them? Fuck it. Fix shell injection. Anyway, hopefully, hopefully they like it. <laughs> hopefully they're okay with me fixing their their buggy ass code. But anyway, that was that was a bit off topic. Preview master. Oh, we already read that one. Yeah, yeah. Baltimore says no. That's fair. I'm hundred percent giving you a hard time. No, it's all good. I have no idea the actual context of the issue. Oh, this issue here. Um. There's some, I, I assume it's because the T2 micro instances in AWS are just really shitty. Uh, but for some reason, both of these, or this command succeeds and then this one fails. Um, so for some reason, the apt metadata is not getting updated despite apt get update succeeding. Um, I don't know why, but doing it three times in a row seems to work. <clears throat> uh, yeah, 
Yeah, that's spaghetti code. Double quotes, smash doesn't value on single quotes. Yeah. Neo says, see, this is why I want to see you unhack the box. One thing leads to another, and you'll be off finding unintended ways to penetrate stuff, and it'll be like, oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It should be fun. Okay, so what error am I supposed to raise here? Um, uh, pretty good worker Q. I think it's step error. Pull. Pull image. Yes. Step error. And the error message ends up in the output. Okay. Mm, raise step error. Uh, hey, what's up? Mm hmm, Tekken. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Hopefully, you are doing well. You said penetrate. Indeed, I did say penetrate. <laughs> Uh, the Elder Force says, but have you tried chaining them with and and? Maybe it's an execution thing. No, and and wouldn't work. So, uh, or actually, that script is set dash e, so it, it uh, the, the commands are actually exiting zero. Um, packer install. So, yeah, because this script is set dash e. Uh, this is exiting zero, and this is exiting zero, so, or sorry, this is exiting non-zero. Um, so what this is doing is saying, like, run this function. This function will exit non-zero if this is non-zero. And so then when this fails, try it again and try it again. Um, hey, what's up, Wagginavas? Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Oh, that's why you like the word stream, because I say it so often, the Alt F4. Welcome to the stream! <laughs> uh, I didn't realize I say stream that often. I, I guess I also have that other, like, st stream, stream, stream sort of way to say stream. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Uh, where does step error come from? Step error. Data dot errors. Why are you in there? That's not where you belong. Should be in here. Step error. Um, what do you inherit from right now? One time error. Raise step error. Um, you know, let's actually do this right. Um, if ret dot ret code elif ret dot return code equals timeout has a specific specific error code timeout man timeout I think it's one twenty four. Yes. The command times out and preserves status is not set. They exit. They will exit with status 124. Otherwise, exit with a status of command. If no signal is specified, send the term. Um. It may be necessary to use the kill signal since the signal cannot be caught, in which case the exit status is 128 plus 9 rather than 124. Let's test this because I am a little bit concerned about that. Let's make a program which ignores sig term. Or it's signal, signal dot signal, signal dot sig term, signal dot sig IGN. Actually, we'll give it a callback. Handler, oops. And uh, star. Cran 
Can't ignore sick term. Time, time dot sleep. One hundred kill. No timeout. No, not the frames. No, not the frames. Oh, that's really fucking annoying. That's really annoying. Damn. Well, hmm. This may be one of those streams. It's maybe one of those streams. Where we just have to end early. Um. Yeah, we just keep dropping frames. This sucks. This really sucks. Um. I'm gonna turn off my air conditioner. Maybe that will make a difference. Mm. But, we'll see. Are we back now? It looks like we might be back now. For now. Ugh. It really sucks. <laughs> well, I'm gonna give my ISP an earful again, again. Uh, I do have a multimeter, so I'm gonna validate that the electrician actually fixed the problem that they claim they fixed, so we'll do that as well. <clears throat> I satisfied says, I got accepted into an associate's program for computer information sciences. Nice, congrats. Radix says, use PDB for fuck's sake. I do use PDB, I use PDB all the time. Uh, but PDB is not gonna help me here. <laughs> I'm debugging how a actual error is going to occur. Uh, uh, dash dash kill after equals. Oh, do I have to put these in a specific order? I do. So let's move that so that this gets fixed. I should have picked numbers smaller than 10 and 12. Okay, cool. It ignored sick term. And then it should kill. Oh, it's gonna do 12 more seconds. Okay, well, it's good that I tried this because uh, otherwise I wouldn't have known. And it exited 137. Interesting. Interesting. So there's two things that could exit. 128 plus nine is 137. Okay, so if return code is in 124 or 137, uh, errors.append, timeout pulling from tag. <clears throat> Else errors.append, error pulling from tag. Um, <sighs> Red dot standard error dot decode. TXT. You know, um, let's not expose this error until we know what those errors kind of look like. To do, maybe show the actual error text here. From standard error. For now, I'm going to not do that. Um, Wikipedia is actually a good source. Just make sure its resources are legitimate and use those in your papers. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Never source Wikipedia, source their sources. Yeah, I agree with that. Hey, what's up, Shazra? How's it going? 
Uh, did this for college. Totally legit way to find good sources. Yeah, indeed. Just don't touch the green wire. Yeah, it's true. Um, Java Grunt says, where do you see the dropped frames? So I have OBS open. Um, oh, God. Dang it. <laughs> hey, Boogden! Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. And I have a little little thing down here, which shows me my kill bits per second. And it also shows me my dropped frames. And I've dropped 2% of my frames for this stream, which is pr pretty bad. Um, but this green thing turns red when I drop frames. So that's that's how I know. But anyway, that's, that's, that's how I know. Speak of the devil. <laughs> or immediately dropping frames. Damn it. Uh, hey, what's up, Balram? Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the stream. <clears throat> but yeah, real, real annoying. Nikshadiv is back. How's it going, Nikshadiv? Hello, hello. Good to see you. The other force says, What's, what kind of terrible electrical wiring do you have in your walls? Let me show you the fucking jank. Oh, I don't have it here. I think I sent it to Juice. Ah, oh, it means I have to scroll back forever. Let me show you the jank ass wiring in my wall that they recently did to fix the problem because there was an open ground before, so there was just like no grounding at all in my house. Um, but here we go. Uh, so this this is what the plug looks like. There's just oops. There's just a. A random green wire coming out of the electrical box. Totally, totally not jank. Um, and then... <laughs> and then, um... And that wire goes behind my desk and just into the floor. Just just comes comes from the thing into the, into the floor. <laughs> Apparently it's attached to a copper pipe on, right underneath the floor. But it's, it's hella jank. Um... Uh, I would move out ASAP if the wiring is that bad. Yeah, I kind of can't. I'm kind of stuck. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Make sure to put a post-it note of your webcam. Uh, but hello again, Boogden. Hello, hello. Oh, Anthony is far behind? Yeah, yeah. And uh, my stream's dead. This might be the end of today's stream. <sighs> Damn it! Alright, well, I guess that's the end of stream for today. Um, hopefully it'll come back and then I'll be able to say goodbye. But it doesn't look like it's gonna happen. Looks like we're we're dead dead on the stream. <laughs> <laughs> 